joined me today uh, for a uh, tour of my truck camper. Um, let's start off with a question, why a truck camper? For my purposes, there was three primary reasons. Um, number one, I already had the truck. Uh, this has had this for a number of years. It's a uh, Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. It's four wheel drive. Uh, I've trust its reliability. I've taken it on many different uh, trips. And uh, you know, I know I've got, so to speak. Plus I didn't have to go out and buy another vehicle. Number two is the idea that with a truck camper, um, the vehicle is going to wear out at some point. You know, I see many people spend a lot of money and time building out uh, RVs or, or uh, vans or other things. Uh, those vehicles will eventually wear out. And yeah, you can replace them, but there, there might be a point in time in the future to where you say, hey, it's not worth it to keep fixing this vehicle. And all of that work that you put into the build of the vehicle um, now has a finite lifespan. With something like a truck camper platform, you know, this truck will eventually wear out. But I built this truck camper uh, with universal dimensions to where I could put it on any full-size pickup truck, F-150 and up. Um, and then uh, finally, it comes down, really kind of mirroring with that second point, it comes down with the versatility of the platform that the camper sits on. So in this case, I was able to build the truck camper I put it on a four-wheel drive pickup truck. For you to take, th this truck camper, and we'll talk about the dimensions shortly, is in a very general sense, roughly about the size of your standard um, cargo van, um, except for it's a little taller and there's some other, uh, some other differences, but you know that's in a very general sense, the living area. Um, for you to take a van, and find a four-wheel drive van, that's gonna be a big challenge unto itself. Um, or to convert it, you know, I've heard estimates of seven to 10 grand to convert it. In this case, I put it right on a pickup truck that's four-wheel drive, um, and uh, I already have that. I don't have to spend all that money for the conversion. In fact, I paid seven grand for this pickup truck, which might be the total price to do a conversion on a van. Um, plus, you know, if for every reason I wanted to take the truck camper off, I could. So ultimately, when I wanted to build a vehicle, and as you guys saw in the intro, that's what I want it for. I want something I can take off-road, I can take off-grid, and know I can get there and get back reliably. And ultimately, when I was thinking about the best platform to do that, that's why I went with the truck camper. So let's talk about some stats. Um, this truck camper was completely handmade by myself, top to bottom. And in fact, uh, I, other than myself and my two young children, uh, I was the only person that worked on it. And the only point in time where I needed actual assistance in the construction was when I put it on the truck. Um, I, I took about uh, just over four months to build it. Uh, I estimated somewhere between four and 500 hours of labor. Um, the truck camper, is um, about 800 pounds dry, uh, which is pretty phenomenal weight for those who may not be familiar for a truck camper weight. And the, and the primary construction uh, is really led to that ability to have such a light um, system here. Uh, the truck camper is, the vast majority of it is built out of cedar, okay? And cedar is a very, has, is a wood that has some very interesting and good qualities, particularly suited for a project like this. Um, a, it's generally rot and water resistant. Uh, it's resistant to bugs. It's relatively dimensionally stable, meaning that it won't move as much with uh, changes in humidity. And most importantly, it's lightweight. Now cedar does have some disadvantages in strength, but in the way in which I built this, uh, you know, I'm not concerned about those issues. And as you'll see, as I talk about the rest of the build, there are other areas where I used other species of woods or other materials where I needed unique strength or other cap or other qualities. Um, so the entire outside of the structure of this camper is planked with 
half inch cedar boards. Now, another thing uh, that was important to me when I built this camper is I wanted to build it with off the shelf uh, materials, or another way of putting it, materials that are easily accessible, okay? As opposed to having to go to some sort of specialty lumber store to buy it. So believe it or not, all of the cedar in the construction of this is cedar fence pickets that I got at a large home store. And in, in my case, it was Lowe's, but you could get it at a Home Depot or some other large store. That wood was relatively inexpensive. I did have to process it. I had to plane it down, but that presented a real uh, advantage in the fact that it was less expensive and it was readily available. Uh, for some of the structural components, because there was a frame that the cedar planking uh, was attached to, uh, I actually made those structural components out of laminating multiple pieces of cedar together. So that was a real benefit. Uh, let's go take around to the back and I'll show you there. All right, here we are to the back of the camper. Here's my little guy, uh, the Squatch. I'm just being funny. Uh, but let, let's go back uh, and continue on in the construction aspect of it. Um, it's not going to be very visible here, but the foundation from the top of the bed rails up sits on uh, a tub. I call it the tub, which slides into the bed of the pickup truck. Now, this is one of those areas where I used alternate materials. And in this case, for the tub portion, which would be the vertical side portion, the the portion that extends over the bed rails, I call, you can call it the wing. I've heard a lot of people refer to it. And the bottom of this is actually made out of varying thicknesses of plywood. Now for water resistance and other protection, I put on a couple coats of a roll-on bed liner material. Now I made the tub out of plywood uh, because it was the primary foundation and, to, and it was uh, essentially, it was honestly just easier in the construction process to start from there and move up. It took up less space, it was just easier to construct, and I wasn't as concerned about the aesthetics of it or uh, the impacts of weather because it's relatively protected by the fact that it sits in the bed. Now, to our point in discussion of alternate species of wood, um, here is one example. The, the door, and again, this door was completely handmade by myself. Um, the frame, the door frame, is actually made out of oak. And then on the door itself, the, f the frame, the header and footer of the door, and the frame around the door was also made out of oak. Now, oak is heavy, but in this case, I chose to use oak because I wanted to add some additional strength, uh, both from a structural standpoint and from a security standpoint around the door. So for example, the lock set uh, sits in oak. So it's gonna be, um, uh, you know, I could have sat it in, it could have, this all could have been cedar and it, and it would have still been functional, but it wouldn't have held, it wouldn't have had the strength to hold up to, you know, if there was attempts to break in. So um, that was one example of where I used an alternate build, uh, building material in a very specific application. So um, on the outside, I'll just touch base um, on a few things. If you look up here, you'll note this hatch, okay? And this hatch opens up, it flaps down. And I'll talk about where that comes into play a little later when we get inside, but don't forget about that. Um, number two, as you'll see here, is uh, this is a, it's a door that covers up um, this opening space between the side of the camper and uh, bed rail of the truck, but it also serves as a outdoor table. Uh, I actually just took a hiking stick I had, added a magnet that attaches to the hardware, and there you go. It's not a very big table, but it, it, it is very useful for many of you guys to know to have some sort of outdoor seating. Now this actually, this space between the camper and the bed rail offers a significant amount of storage. As you'll see when we get on the inside, I actually have access points on the inside so where you can um, get to storage areas in front of the wheel well, uh, but between the bed rail of the truck and the camper. Um, as far as how the camper is attached to the truck, uh, I use turnbuckles. So essentially the turnbuckles are bolted to the side of the camper 
and then they lock into the attachment points that all pickups have in all four corners. Um, in the front, I added some additional security by having some ratchet straps that I could use to uh, tie the truck down. Let me just touch on a few features of the outside uh, of this camper. As you guys will note in the upper corner, I actually have two uh, exterior lights. And in regards to the door, um, it can be held in place with this little uh, residential magnetic latch. And I use a traditional house residential lock set. And I, I chose to use a combination lock on the door. Um, it definitely was more expensive, but it's very convenient, especially if you're out hiking or something and you want to stow keys in the camper to just have a combination lock to get access to it. Now, this will be a trend that, or a feature that you'll see in this camper. This entire camper is insulated. In fact, I would argue it's insulated very well, especially compared to other campers. And this includes the door. So you see right here, this brown material. This is actually a polystyrene foam board that's wrapped in a fabric. In this case, it's duck. It's like a light canvas that's actually inset into the door itself. And that technique is one of the primary ways in which I insulated this entire camper. So you could see, for example, here, this is a polystyrene board. It's two inches thick, wrapped in this duck fabric. Um, you'll see in the front, there's another one, and on the roof, and then in a couple other spots, you'll see inside where the insulation on the walls are that way. Using that, not only do I think it looks nice, but it also reduces weight and construction time because as opposed to having to sheath the entire wall surface with um, you know a thin piece of plywood for example I can just cover the uh, polystyrene foam boards with the fabric and install them directly on the wall and as you'll see inside I think it really offers a really nice aesthetic to the build um, now, I even insulated the floor. So the floor has uh, two inches of polystyrene foam insulation, which sits under um, this. This is actual legitimate, a legitimate wood floor. It's made from the same kind of cedar. I did treat it slightly different because it was a high traffic area uh, as the rest of the build of the camper. So let's step on in. I'll give you guys a view around, and then I'll start talking about uh, the different components inside. So I think one of the first things that you guys will notice is that the interior of this camper, for what it is, is very roomy, all right? So um, if any of you guys are familiar with a lot of truck campers or even some van builds, they will put cabinets and a bunch of things right to the center and you'll have a very, very narrow hallway. Um, and in this case, there's actually quite a bit of floor space in here. And um, and the upper portion up around your head is the cabinets. I actually purposely set them back a little bit to give it a very roomy and open feel in here. For, I mean, being mindful of the size of this space, of course. Um, another thing is the height. Um, I am about 5'8", not a super tall guy, but you can, this is tall enough to stand in if you're about six foot one. So let's, let's talk about the bed space here. So in this case, you're, you lay, uh, east to west and it's about, um, I think you've got about, if I remember correctly, 75 inches from that wall to the other wall of actual space. Uh, the depth of this is, um, I think at its, wide, at its uh, longest going back, is 54 inches. Um, and this overall height, if I'm just going off my memory, guys, I apologize, I think is about 38 or 40 inches high. So um, from a, a mattress standpoint, uh, it fits a full-size bed. And as opposed to a lot of truck campers where you sleep north and south, meaning that your head would be at the front of it, um, this one you sleep side to side or east to west. Um, and then here I just have a five inch memory foam mattress. Um, I mean, it's not a huge space for me. It's perfect. And I think it's kind of cozy. Two adults could sleep up there, um, easily two children. Um, and if you'll notice, um, these framing supports right here, remember I was talking about the boards or the, um, 
cedar that I laminated together, these are actually portions of the overall frame. And you can see that they extend into portions of the wall. So for example, right here. Um, so there is some thermal bridging there, but on the sides, as you can see, that's a singular piece of insulation. So I did make some attempts, though I wasn't completely successful, to avoid a lot of the thermal bridging that uh, might occur from having some of the uh, exposed structural elements in the camper. I'll talk about my initial anecdotes of how well the insulation is working later, but overall, I don't think it's a, a, a large problem. Uh, it should be noted that the insulation in the ceiling is, except for the very front and the very back, is actually four inches thick of a polystyrene foam insulation. So that's pretty substantial, especially for a space like this. Uh, you can see um, I've got a fantastic fan. And actually, this spacer for the fantastic fan is about four inches, and I, I didn't have to cut anything. It fit perfect. So that just gives you a sense for how much insulation exists in this uh, ceiling right here. You can see all of the lights are um, inset LED lighting and they exist all the way around. The ones above the bed are simply on a switch and the rest of these uh, function on a dimmer, uh, which, is a, which is a real nice feature. All right, so let's move up to here. So when I built this, it was important for me to having a, a lounge area or a seating area. Um, it's not big. These Each of these uh, seats here are about uh, 20 inch, or I'm sorry, correction, 28 inches wide. Um, so definitely uh, big enough for an adult and uh, maybe two small children could squeeze into one. Um, this table is mounted on a lagoon mount. If you guys aren't familiar with it, they're a little pricey, but they do offer some advantages. So it can move side to side, which uh, aids in uh, the ease of getting in and out or if you want a little bit of space in front of you. Plus, the table itself can be actually removed. And finally, the advantage is you'll note that you have a completely free and clear space for your feet. So you're not kicking any kind of stool or any kind of table legs or anything like that. It's completely open. Um Again, you know, these walls, you could see this is an, more examples of the use of that polystyrene foam wrapped in the fabric, which, are, which worked out really well. Uh, the refrigerator I have in here is an Iceco VL45. Uh, it's just a chest fridge. Um, uh, you know, nothing special there, just a, a standard chest refrigerator. Um, this one is not a dual zone, but you can either set it up for temperatures that you would typically associate with a freezer or a fridge. I use it as a fridge. Um, and this kind of, another point, uh, well, let's little roll around here. You'll see that the heart of my electrical system is a solar generator. In this case, it's a Blue Eddy EB2400. Um, and I'll talk, this will be a theme that will come up more and more in this project. But one thing I really wanted to do was A, use materials and products which were readily available. They weren't custom made or they weren't hard to obtain. And two, I wanted all of the systems in here to be modular, meaning that if there was a damage, if technology improves and I want to replace something later, I could simply pull the product out and put a new one in. Another example to that is the uh, AC unit. And that's going to be a really interesting feature of this I'll talk about momentarily. But if the AC unit fails, this is just a standard 5,000 BT unit. I could pull it out, put a new one in. They're relatively universally sized. This chest fridge, fridge is held down with some straps, but other than that, it's not permanently affixed in the camper. So if I wanted to put a different size one in there, or if this one fails or something, it would. it's not like it's part of a cabinet to where I would have to remove it and find one that exactly fit. I could just, I would have quite a bit of real estate to play with here in size. And that's the same thing with the power system. Um, I felt this was a really clever way to do it using a solar gen because the system is not built in largely with some, with some exception I'll talk about uh, into the camper itself. And the advantage to that is that if this fails or if technology improves or I get an opportunity to get a different one I think is better, I can simply pull the solar generator out 
and put a new one in. And for those who may not be familiar, a solar generator is really a three-in-one device. Most of them, or at least all of them I've seen, use a lithium-ion battery, which is certainly the case in this, uh, housed in the same um, uh, container or the same device that also has an inverter and a solar charge controller. Um, that brings me to the next interesting, or the next point. This camper has about 400 watts of solar, which are installed on the top, that are fed in to, to keep this solar generator charged. Now, um, uh, the only other construction that I had to do for the electrical system was all of the wires for the lighting are fed behind the insulation and other various areas into a central fuse box, which is located down inside this cabinet. And, um, and then that fuse box is simply plugged into the DC output of this solar generator. The solar uh, panels obviously have fixed wire that comes through the roof uh, and then come through the camper and plug in uh, to this little outlet here that I can... Um, uh, install into the solar generator if I wanted to generate, uh, you know, recharge it. So as you can see right there, I just plugged it in. It is a winter day and I'm facing to the north. There is a slight uh, uh, elevation on my roof. So my panels are technically facing toward the north and I'm still producing 200, about 230 watts of solar, which is pretty impressive. And that's how I would charge the solar gen. Right here, I have all my switches. Now, here's a feature which I don't think you see very often and I think really makes this camper a game changer. As you saw from the intro, my motivation for this is I wanted to be able to go off-grid. I wanted to be able to take a camper and drive it out into the desert or into the forest and not have to be married to um, a campground, right? I didn't want to have to be limited by a dirt road. Uh, I didn't want to be limited by a small amount of snow. Um, and I'm out here in the desert southwest, and staying cool is a big aspect of it. So this is a simply a 5,000 BTU AC unit. Believe it or not, this is actually run completely off-grid by this solar generator. So... I can run this AC, and I haven't tested it in real life conditions to be able to show, to determine how, exactly how long, but the anecdotes I have is that I can run this AC unit three to four hours on, the, on a single charge of this uh, solar generator. But I have 400 watts of solar. In an ideal production situation, this AC unit only draws four to 450 watts of energy. So I could almost run this continuously uh, in ideal solar conditions during the day uh, while maintaining and keeping a charge on the solar generator. Now, I think what we can all see from this space here though, and unfortunately I, I finished this camper recently and I haven't been able to test it in real world warm conditions, but a 5,000 BTU AC unit is probably not gonna need to run continuously in here to keep it cool. So. Guys, uh, there is, in small spaces and a very unique set of circumstances, there is, my tests have shown that there is a way to have off-grid AC. Um, I think it's a pretty much a, 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 very, a game changer, and I think it's a real interesting feature. If you guys remember back when I was showing you the back and I directed you guys up to that little flap that was on the upper um, corner of the camper, that flap comes down and there's a ducting system back here that directs the heated uh, exhaust away and provides for an intake um, so that the AC unit runs efficiently. And the nice thing about that is the AC unit is housed internally within the camper and it, it's not an eyesore hanging out the back of the camper. And I don't also have all that extra weight just hanging there. Um, this right here is just a just a, a storage cabinet, nothing special there. Um, down here is a um, another cabinet, and this is a porta potty. And I also uh, have some toilet paper and a fire extinguisher and some other things down there. Um, I really like the cassette toilet, and having a cassette toilet with the camper was one of the conditions that I wanted. And having it in that cabinet 
really, um, it, it's aesthetically pleasing. I don't have a toilet sitting out in the middle of my living space, but it also, uh, I, I don't typically have big smell issues with these, but it does eliminate any smell. So effectively, I have no smell issues inside this camper. Um, so let's, these are little things. So this right here is actually held on with a magnet. See the magnet right there and the magnet right there. And this little thing is a three-part system. It functions as a stool, so you could sit on it. You can open it up and it can either be storage. I typically use it as a trash can. But what it also does is if you take off the top of it, it is exactly the height of this. You see that right there? And then what I can do is I can pull the backrest off set this in the middle of the floor here, rest the backrest on here, push these seated portions of the of the cushions back, and the backrest will actually rest on here, rest on here, and form another bed area. Um, you know, it's about, like I said, about 28 inches wide, um, so you can actually sleep a third person in here. Um, and that was also another important thing. So, for example, when my kids and I go out camping, uh, down here, um, those are access points to the turnbuckles that hold the front of the camper down. And they also allow access to um, store stuff in the front portion of the, of the space between the bed rail and the camper itself. Those doors are insulated too, by the way. Um, quick story on this wall, this uh, accent wall, which as you can see, kind of extends all the way down there. This is legitimate um, reclaimed pallet wood. Um, my kids and I found it out in the desert uh, by an old mine, and uh, it was just rotting out in the desert. All of this distressed and the coloring that you see is completely natural. That Those pallets, you know, God knows how long they sat out in the desert. We broke them apart, took them home, and I planed down the opposite end and ran them through a table saw. And they turned out to be a hardwood pallets. They're uh, oak and poplar. So I use it as an accent wall, but it also has um, a structural component of some shear strength for this portion of the wall. You guys can see right here some of the joinery. So this portion I'm touching right here is part of a beam that runs uh, horizontally directly out to support the front of the cab over. And you could see where it was laminated together in a fixed joint. That's another interesting thing. I don't um, build campers or do woodworking as a profession, but I have done it for just under 20 years as a hobby. Um, I built this camper really more like a piece of furniture than I did a traditional uh, uh, construction, like you would a house, for example. Um, Let's talk about storage. So as you guys can see up here, I have a shelf, and then this is just a um, just a cabinet. You know, I keep little odds and ends, and I'm gonna do a video later where I kind of talk about what I keep in the camper and why. Uh, another shelf, this right here, let's see if anything falls out. Yep, there we go. <laughs> this right here is, uh, is another cabinet I use for food storage. Let me get these. Uh, top ramen there. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'll just put those there. Um, and yeah, that's the storage. So let's move over to the kitchen area here. So this is the kitchen area. And um, I think I did something pretty unique here also for the water system. So I carry 14 gallons on board. So these blue, let's see if this shows up, these blue seven gallon um, storage containers and there's two of them there's another one right here and they're strapped in there so they're fixed and then that goes to a sink and this is just the classic bowl sink that i drilled in the center and added this um is fed by one of these usb rechargeable um faucets okay uh, of course i made the ubiquitous um cutting board out of when I cut out the section for the sink here. Um, but this is, I think, a really interesting feature. And again, it follows the theme with off-the-shelf products and modularity. So you could replace stuff as it, as it breaks. These are products that you just buy on Amazon. And um, I'm sure you could buy them other ways. And they're, they're basically a battery, a pump, um, and a faucet all in one. 
And what they're meant for is to attach to your standard five gallon water uh, jugs. And you can see the little blue thing here, which is probably similar. And it's got a hose attached to it. So what I was able to do was find some PVC fittings that were the perfect diameter for this. I actually cut a hole in the counter type I made here, screwed them together, and then this has a fiction fit, flit, fiction fit onto that piece. And I drive around off-road, it doesn't fall off. And then that is fed by this hose right here down into these water containers. And I just swap from water one water container over to the other when the water runs out. And that's very, very convenient um, uh, as a very sink, uh, simple sink system. I don't have an external pump. I don't have to worry, you know, if these uh, water tanks get dirty or they wear, you know, I don't know. For whatever reason, I don't want them anymore. It's not like the water tanks are in a fixed position in the camper and they can't be changed out. And in fact, that's how I refill these. I just pull these out and fill them with, with filtered water. Um, if you were off grid someplace and you want to take them to a stream and filter water and put them in there, you could. If you wanted to remove them and replace them, you could. If you wanted to take one out and use it in a, as a watering station outside of the camper, you could. And that's the nice modular aspect of the camper. Over here is uh, just some more storage. Now, and as opposed to wanting to have a, a fixed uh, stove, what I did is I just opted to keep the counter space open and I just use, you know, your classic two burner stove. And if you see here, I actually made a little, a little storage area that it slides in. Here's the drain sink and the drain actually just goes and dumps right out the side of the truck out onto the ground. And then of course there's other generic storage back there. And then this fits right into this little, that little cubby there. Nice and, nice and sturdy. So when you're driving around, it's not flopping around. And of course the doors have a little latch on them. So um, guys, I think I have pretty much talked my head off in here showing you guys everything. Um, uh, but I'm very proud of this. Oh, one more thing I wanna show you. These window coverings, right? This was another idea I came up with, which I think is very clever. These are just pieces of wood. They're insulated, just like the front door, and they swing around on a hinge, right? Uh, sorry, the camper is on a slight incline, so they're gonna slide open. But they actually nest against the wall here above the seat rest. And then there's the window, and these windows are relatively small and tinted. So when they're open, you still have some element of privacy. Now the advantage of this system here, and this is held in place with a magnet, is that I can have a completely covered window and it's insulated, um, which I think is a really uh, nice addition to this because there's many times at night where I don't wanna look outside. I just want to have be able to shut off the window, have complete privacy and have insulation. Or if you're out in warmer weather, you could keep those shut, prevent the sun coming through. And in fact, these covers are insulated. So you're avoiding the heat loss through the windows. Um, I thought that was a pretty clever idea and it's really, really worked out well. Um, this one right here, and you could see right there, cause I'm not, I'm on the incline on the opposite side. Um, you know, that's how they would stay open and they don't, they're not in the way I can sit and you know now i have access to a window with a screen and ventilation and all that kind of stuff and when i'm ready to travel or if i want privacy or i'm gonna cool or warm it in here and i want to add some extra insulation to the window i just shut it so i hope you guys enjoyed this i've done a lot of videos that kind of chronicled the construction of this and i've talked about other aspects of this but this is kind of the first overall of the camper so let me know what you guys think um, please share it i'm very proud of this build i think there's a lot of things that can inspire others and some good ideas for people to incorporate so thanks a bunch